Here's what we're talking about today. Look at it. Rest. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What, what, what? Rest? What is that? What is rest? You know, I believe that uh, very few people online with us right now and sitting in the, my presence uh, can claim that we have burden-free lives. Maybe none, but if so, very, very few. Can I get a big amen? amen. We don't have burden-free lives. And uh, maybe you can relate to this picture right here. Check, a look, check it out. I really need a day between Saturday and Sunday. Anybody with me? <laughs> How about this one? Uh, I may look like I'm resting, but my, in my head, I'm very busy. Can y'all relate to that? This is Todd Harvey. Lay down. Nothing ever slows down. You try to slow down. You may look like you're slowed down on the outside, but on the inside, it's still going. Whoo. And if you're not careful, this next one is you. I can't be held responsible for what my face does when I, when I talk or when you talk. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. Be honest in church. Come on now. <laughs> or maybe this is you. You're so tired. You don't know where your bed is. Look at this. You're so tired, you don't know where your bed is or whether it's a dog or the, you're in the wrong bed or whatever. If you're like me, my daddy had a, a, a kidney transplant Friday week. This was me, a picture of me in intensive care trying to find a place to sleep. <laughs> they don't have anything for place for you to sleep in intensive care. She's got one boot on, one sock on, and she found something to lay her head on, something her feet on. Or about the second night, look at this in the hospital, you get to where you just don't give a flying rip where you're at. Wherever you can lay down, you go to sleep. By the third night in the hospital, look at this, you don't care. You find a couch and there's people walking around, your head's hanging out in the hallway, and you just don't give a flying rip. This was me. <laughs> so, you know, why do we need rest? Why is it so critical that we get rest? Because if you stay in that Snoopy mode, where you're laying down and everything's still spinning around, if, you, if we stay in that Snoopy mode, we're never going to get out of this thing. Your outside may look okay and good, and, but everything on the inside, you have no peace, and it's just going 9,000 miles an hour. And on the inside, it looks like this. You know, you're trying to rest, and, and it's kind of embarrassing. But, you know, when you don't get the rest that you need, um, your smile goes away. I saw somebody out here. Where's Risha? Is she in here? And she's in the nursery. She's got a smile on the front of her. But when you don't have rest, your smile goes away. When you don't have the right of rest, your inner joy goes away. When you don't have right rest, you don't, you don't have peace. If you're not careful, you'll start worrying about everything. Anxiety takes over the joint. Fear takes over the joint. Anger takes over the joint. And you can't be controlled. You can't be held accountable for what your face looks like or sometimes say when we don't have rest and you don't trust God. Big thing that begins to happen. I believe Satan doesn't want us to have rest in any way. He's an interrupter of that. You don't trust God, and, and you end up getting on defense. We've been talking about offense. And if you're not careful, and you don't trust God, you don't get the right rest, you can find yourself on the wrong side of the ball. Where we're supposed to be on defense, we say, huh, huh, we're supposed to be going wrong. You're, you can find yourself on the wrong side of the ball, trying to stop the play, the very play that God has you part purpose of in the body of Christ, because you don't have the right kind of rest. And then Satan, he wants us to be burdened, He's loading us down with these burdens, and he wants us to be separated like the egg yolk. And so when you don't have the right amount of rest, if you're not careful, you start making a list of everything your wife does wrong. Sir, you don't say amen right there. And ladies, you start making a list of everything your husband does wrong. And you get this big old giant pile over here of a list of things they did wrong or somebody else did wrong. And you get this other pile and you're not focused on yourself. You focus on everybody else because you don't have any rest. Can I get a big amen? The rest of you need to repent. And so I'm telling you, instead of loving, 
each other and forgiving each other, we try to fix everybody. Ta-da! All of us. And so then you get on the wrong side of the ball and you get mad and you're like a chainsaw on the inside and burdens, 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 heavy, 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 heavy. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about today? So <laughs> we were reading in my mother's Bible and my mother has Alzheimer's and she can't read anymore. And bless her heart, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you know what, if you've ever dealt with that, it's a heavy weight and trying to do all this stuff. And, but we were looking in her Bible and she, she wrote down in her Bible, she said, if you say you are a Christian and that you have peace and joy, then she, she said, my mother said, you need to tell your face. <laughs> I'll let that register for a little bit. <laughs> If you say you're a Christian and have peace and, peace and joy, then you need to tell your face. And so, yes, we all, we, we get focused on everything that we think is going wrong. And uh, the real question today is how do you break that Snoopy mold where he's laying on top of the doghouse? Put that back up on there. How do you break this Snoopy mold where, not that one, Snoopy. Anybody like Snoopy in the house? All right. So how do you break this Snoopy mold? Everything looks right on the outside, but on the inside, it's not right at all. How, how do you break this Snoopy mold? And how, how do you get true rest and release those burdens? Jesus talks about three ways to do this in Matthew chapter 11. I want you to find that. Turn to Matthew chapter 11. And we'll start reading in verse 25 through 23, Jesus, we kind of come into this thing and eavesdrop. If you don't have your Bible, you won't see this. So you have to bring your B-I-B-L-E to Cowboy Church or scoot across the aisle and find somebody or get your iPhone and look at this. This is, I guarantee you, a section of Scripture you need to find and mark in your B-I-B-L-E and come back and study it. So in this Scripture, Jesus, he told his disciples how to release their burdens that they're carrying. How do you release burdens that they're carrying? But first, in this section of Scripture, we get to eavesdrop on Jesus saying a prayer, praying to the Father. Let's stand together as we read God's Word. Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 25 through, and we'll read down through 30, and then we'll begin to look at His Word and, and bring application to it. He says, in verse 25, chapter 11, Matthew, it says, At that time Jesus declared, this is the eavesdrop of the prayer, He said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to the little children. In verse 26, He says, Yes, Father, for such, such was your gracious will. It's God's will that this happened. It says that all things have been handed over to me and by the, my Father. And one, it says, and no one knows the Son except he knows the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone, who, who, uh, anyone to know him whom the Son chooses, anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So you're not going to know the Father unless the Son chooses to reveal him. You're not going to know the Son unless you know the Father and so forth. Verse 28, it says, Whew. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, what's that word? Rest. Take up my yoke upon you and lean and learn from me. And I am gentle, for I am gentle and lowly at heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, praying right now in the name of Jesus for the miracle of rest over every person in my presence. 
online, every person that hears this message for years to come. I'm praying for the miracle of your rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Have a seat. I appreciate that. Powerful time. Jesus explains, yeah, amen. Jesus explains, he's referring to this, that he's saying in these first verses, in verse 25, look at it, it says, but the time of Jesus is declared. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden those things from the wise and the understanding, but yet, here, look at it, revealed them to little children. Revealed them to little children. And so what Jesus is saying here, he's revealed the things, that he's hidden those things from people that think they have life figured out without God. And he's hidden the things from those and revealed them to the little children. Anybody here tried to figure life out without God? Say, oh me. Oh me. Yes. And so that life... Life questions, you come to realize life's questions of burdens don't get figured out by you going to graduate school. <laughs> you can't figure out the answers by education. That's what Jesus is saying, that you can't figure out life's burdens or, or being able to have rest unless there is spiritual illumination. Can I get a big amen? You're not going to figure this thing of rest out by taking a little vacation. How many of y'all know you can take a vacation and come out more stressed out than what it was before you left? <laughs> oh, me. You don't figure out life's burdens. You don't figure out how to get spiritual rest unless you can get spiritual illumination. Jesus said, Thank you, Father, for keeping it secret to those that think they can figure it out, figure life out without you. You ever be around smart people? Around somebody that's so smart that they can't relate to things? You ever been around somebody, that some of the smartest people I know are the stupidest people I know. Some of the smartest people I know are the stupidest people I know. They're so smart that they're dumb. So dumb because they're so smart. And God says he'd be happy to hide things from people that don't think they need God. This is the eavesdrop that we came in. Jesus is praying this. And so the big question is, what's the first thing that Jesus talks about? How do we get this rest? What's the first big, 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 giant step that we have to take if you won't rest? How do you do it? How do you release the burdens that have you weighted down and you just, no, oh, you can't carry them anymore and you're trying to shuck them off? How in the world with the things going on in your life right now and these burdens, can you get rest? And what I'm fixing to say is extremely profound. And I'm going to take my cowboy hat off because I do that. I either take it off or I chunk it. <laughs> I'm going to hang on to it right now. But I'm fixing to say something extremely profound. And if you get this, it's everything. If you don't do this, you will never Never, 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 never get rest. The first thing we got to do if we're going to have rest is, number one, trust God. The more you lean on your own understanding, the more you acknowledge your decisions based on your past or what you think or what somebody else thinks, the less you trust God. 
It makes me want to slap somebody. That's not good for preachers to do, is it? When they say, just trust God. You don't know what I've been going through this week. You don't know how long this has been going on. You don't know the burden that I'm carrying. But until you trust God to do what you can't do, you will never, never, never find rest. Never. So we have to trust God. Lean not on our own understanding. And all of a sudden, what you don't understand, you trust that he fully understands the circumstances, somebody, something, whatever it is that is your burden. God knows 10,000 times better than you. And he can change somebody else's heart or correct the things or fix you. Maybe you think it's there the problem and you're the biggest problem in the middle. You're the daggum fat white elephant in the middle of the room and you don't even see it. But when you trust God, <sighs> everything gets so light. Everything you're carrying like gets put on God's shoulders. Circumstances don't change. The burden doesn't change. But the weight of the burden changes. Can I get a big amen? amen. There's more. There's a lot more. Tony Evans said about this scripture, look at it on your screen. It says, the answer to life's burdens is not found in human wisdom, but through divine viewpoint. The answer to life's burdens is not found in human wisdom, but in through the divine viewpoint, trusting God. So how, do you, how did Jesus say that we are to trust God in this crazy world in these situations. The first thing he said there was in verse 25. He says, in that times of Jesus declared, he said, he says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden those things from the wise and understood standing and revealed them to, what does that say? To the little children. So how do we trust God? We trust God like a little child, like an infant trusts his mama, like a young child trusts his daddy. Come on, somebody, say amen. That's what it means to trust God. You don't fully understand, but you trust them like an infant trusts his mama. We have to trust God. And the only way we have access, you've got to understand, he says here in the Scripture, to the Father is through the Son. And so look at verse 28. Then he says... In verse 28, he says, come to me. Can I hear you say that? Come to me. It's hard to come to Jesus in the middle of a burden, isn't it? Just nod your head and look and tell you. You want to go talk to somebody else? Can't wait to talk to somebody else? Want to ask somebody else their question? You want to read something else? You want to watch this deal? You want to go grab, you wish you could hold somebody else accountable? You wish you could fix that list of your wife? All this other stuff, your mind's going. But when you trust God, you lay things down, turn loose of what you're trying to do and the burdens, you release them. He says, Come to me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, I'll give you rest. So if life is weighing you down and the burdens of life, are too much for you to carry and too much for you to bear, come to me. This week, I was praying, Lord, how in the world am I going to have some time to study? I study between every little message I've ever presented. It's taken me between 25 and 35 hours. That's how I study the Word of God. I double-check things in, in reference and, and, and so forth, and, and, and it takes a long time. I'm slower than the average bear, but I'm telling you, that's how much time it takes. And this week, mm -mm, not going to happen. And I'm like, Lord, where is 
the message. What do you want me to preach? And he told me the message is all around me. I said, what are you talking about? And I, was, I got home for the first time to put out cows, the hay for, for cattle in the middle of the rain last Wednesday or something like that. I don't even know what day it was. But in, in the Lord's, I'm saying, what am I supposed to share this coming Sunday, this Wednesday? And, and, and he said, the message is all around you. And through that, all that, and that next morning was the first morning I had to stop. And somebody was staying at the hospital for me. And, and, uh, and all I heard through all the noise of burden was the presence of the Lord saying, come to me. And I had this person to call and I had this person that had to check on this and check on this hospital, this and this and the church. I'm juggling all these things with the church. Everybody else in the hospital, not, not, not just mine. And, and I'm, uh, funerals and all this stuff. And I hear, come to me. And I keep going, 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 going. And it, the Holy Spirit just kept interrupting me. Come to me. Come to me. And I put my phone down. And I got up and went to my little quiet spot where I study. And I opened my Bible to come to me. All who are weary and heavy laden. So I believe with all my heart, rest is, is a miracle. God has to do it in us. Why? Why? Because only He can really give you that rest. The second th part of rest that we do is, number two, we need to accept His invitation to salvation. He's talking about in the Scripture. To accept His invitation to salvation. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you will never Never, under any circumstance, be able to understand the kind of rest that Jesus is talking about. So you have to accept, it's an invitation here, to, to have rest of the soul. And so to, to rest that God, that God gives you in your soul of burdens of eternal life and receiving the joy of forgiveness and eternal life, you have to trust God in everything, but you also have to accept the invitation to salvation and receive rest of your soul. So don't, Jesus didn't, if, if Jesus doesn't know you, he said he will tell you, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. No blue card is an access, no connection card is access to you knowing Jesus Christ and him knowing you. He has to know you, not about you. He created you, he knows all about you, but does he, Gnosko, have a love relationship with you? Are you following him or have you just said lip service and prayed a little prayer and got baptized somewhere and you're going on the wrong? Jesus is saying, hut, hut. And you're somewhere, you're on the wrong side of the ball, actually trying to stop the body of Christ, slow down the body of Christ, not advance the play because you're mad or because you've you're got burdens and you don't have time for God. You're up in the stands, you're out of the stadium, and you're not anywhere near what God's trying to do. Why? Are you really saved? Because if you're really saved... Hebrews chapter 12 says God's going to chase you down like an old yard dog. <laughs> and you can't outrun God. Amen? But if you can keep on going on the wrong side of the ball, whether you're in church or out. I was in church, okay, and I was on the wrong side of the ball. I looked like I was doing the right things, but my, I'm a little snoopy mindset deal. Everything's wrong on the inside. And I got that right. You have to accept the invitation of salvation. I don't care if you're 15 or 25 or 35 or 45 or 55 or 65 or 75 or 85. If there's any 95-year-olds, very respectfully, you have to know Jesus Christ to receive rest in your soul. You have to. And so that Jesus is saying that. Third rest he's talking about is number three. You get rest when you yoke. You receive the yoke of discipleship. He starts talking about yoke. What does that mean? Look at it in verse 29. He says, take up my yoke upon you. Jesus said that. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Take up my yoke. Jesus said, come to me. Get hooked up with me. 
Get hooked up with me and your burdens and, and the, what you're carrying. You know, and a, a yoke was a piece of wood. A long piece of wood usually had some carved out where it fit over an oxen's neck. And there was two, two oxen would be strapped together and they would be harnessed together with this piece of wood that went across both of them's neck and shoulders to be able to plow. And they were harnessed together to, to bring submission, bring an ox under submission. Why? To enable them to do the work that the farmer had for them. Enable them to do the work that the farmer had for them. And how they would train oxen was put a younger oxen Am I saying that right? <laughs> a younger oxen with an older, it doesn't, doesn't, may not be an older, maybe the worst thing to do is get you with an older oxen that runs off and kicks and bucks and breaks the plow and doesn't do it, but a, an ox that's under control, that's in submission in the farmer's hand, that the farmer can trust, that is helping them run the play, not trying to stop the play, not trying to plow crooked, not trying to go the opposite direction. This is an ox that the farmer trust and then the farmer would put a younger oxen with that and yoke them to that so that they could learn and so they, that oxen would come in maturity and be developed and the point is this is the reason you're so burdened because you haven't accepted the yoke of discipleship the yoke of discipleship with Jesus Christ or is the reason you're so burdened is because maybe you're, you're not connected. You haven't allowed yourself to be connected with a very spiritually mature person that's going to snatch a hole in your tail if you go to going the wrong way. And accountability. Someone that's holding you accountable. Maybe the reason you're so burdened is because this, this person that you have yoked yourself to is one of those smart people. They're so smart, they're stupid. How you know they're stupid? Because they're mad and angry and trying to hope, fix everybody else and not worried about themselves. And there's no love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, self-control, no forgiveness. No, they just hold a grudge against everybody. If you're yoked to that person, unyoke yourself from a stupid person. Tell them I called them stupid. Because if they're not being controlled by the fruits of the Spirit then they're not being in control of God. And they may be real smart, can read a book a day, but they're so smart, they're stupid. And the reason you're burdened is because you're yoked to the wrong person. Jesus said, I'm gentle. Get yoked to me. Look at it. He says, take up my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest. Reason you're not rested because you yoke to the a person somehow or another, and then and maybe the point is this: is that your you, your your yoke you haven't yoked to Jesus in discipleship, enabling the Word of God to be your guide. And I'm here to tell you that when you get yoked up with discipleship with Jesus Christ, it enables you how to learn how to live, and you will get rest. Amen. When you trust Jesus, when you when you have You've, you've in, accepted the invitation of salvation and when you uh, get yoked up in discipleship. So look at this. Number one, to get rest, you've got to quit leaning on your own understanding and trying to fix your wife and trust God. Now, you are accountable for fixing your wife, sir. You, you just read Revel, or Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 22. It says, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. And then verse 23 and 24 and 25 in that section says, Husbands are the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And then you're supposed to love your wives in three different ways. And so you're supposed to love them with a caring love, a purifying love. If they're out of line, you better snatch a hole in your wife's tail because you're going to be held accountable for her actions. Read this scripture, Ephesians 5. You say, well, I can't handle my wife. Well, then you're, God's going to handle you. And wives, if you're not submitting to your own husband as to the Lord, you're not trusting God to handle that stupid sucker. You're looking at your list. Don't say amen. When you trust God, when you accept his salvation, 
And when you accept the yoke of discipline, you trust him, you get rest. Salvation rests deep in your soul. Accept this yoke connected to of discipleship. Then the world becomes an easier place. So why, why is it all so critical that you find this spiritual rest we're talking about uh, of your soul, rest on this earth? Why does it need to be a goal for you this year? How do you remember this message? How, how do you not forget this and leave it on the screen? Look at verse 30. It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why? Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So Jesus is saying here, Jesus, he, he wants to make, he's not saying he's going to make your problems disappear. Y'all hearing that? That's not what he's saying. He's not saying he's going to make our problems disappear. What he is saying that if we get hitched up to him, that the weight of our burdens is going to decrease. Y'all hear me? The weight of your burdens, if you get hitched up to him, is going to decrease. Y'all know what it's like to carry a big old suitcase in an airport and you're trying, it's packed full and you can't hardly carry it and the more you try to carry it, the more it weighs down. But if your suitcase has wheels on it, <laughs> it helps you carry the right weight, right? You understand? When you get yoked up to Jesus, he can put wheels on your burdens, okay? How many of y'all rich people got the tow haul button. You don't have to be rich because I got one on my old truck. <laughs> Y'all know what a tow haul button is in a, on an automatic tra transmission? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You know how when, you, when you're, the gear ratio gets and you're pulling the load, pulling the trailer, and this thing's bogging down, going up a hill, and the gear ratio is just too heavy to pull, there's a little button. And when you push that tow haul button, you know, it just makes, it, it rechanges the RPMs of the transmission. It gears up and all of a sudden, whoa, it starts pulling. Some of you guys that got a new Dodge got to even a jake brake. Come on, somebody. All you guys that got a Dodge, let me hear you say amen. All you guys got a Ford or a Chevrolet, just, it's just a wishful oh me. <laughs> When you get yoked up with Jesus, he gives you a tow haul button that gets you pulling that load. I mean, if nothing's changed, the load's still there. But it's like he gets behind your burdens and begins to get that tow haul mode and push. And it, it relieves all kinds of stuff. So God, 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 he'll make your burdens that you're dealing with so much easier. And you will find rest you'll find rest why do we need to do this why this this message why is it so critical that you do this today that you start this today because rest will never come to you unless Rest, you'll never find it. You'll never find this pressure is never going to change unless, listen to me, the rest of your soul is never going to happen until this happens. Look at my Snoopy picture. Rest never going to happen until you look up. Amen? It's real key, real critical. You got to keep looking up. That's the secret to life, Snoopy says. So if you want God to give you rest, you got to look up. Can I get a big amen? You know where I'm headed with this. Because when you're looking up, you stop looking at your burdens. <laughs> when you're looking at your burdens, you may be married to your burden. <laughs> Or whatever it is. Are you you raising your burden? And and when you're looking at your burden, you ain't looking up. And you're not trusting God. 
Oh me, oh my, look at this. And so when you look up, when you look up, you trust him with salvation. When you get rest of your soul. When you look up, when you look up, the yoke of dis- discipleship happens and you're looking up, trusting him. And Jesus, uh, he helps you with your burdens. He helps carry these burdens and you're yoked up with him. And it just starts to happen. Everything happens. It comes together. And, and you get things get light when you look up. When you look up, you're not trying to fix everybody else. You're just looking up and you're just trusting God. Come on, somebody. And you look it up. Because you trust in Him and not worried about your own understanding, not trying to fix everything, not trying to mis- fix your marriage. It's like a big old giant triangle. And you're right down here in the bottom of this triangle, and your husband's right down here at the bottom of this triangle. And you've got this big list of things you wish you could fix on him, this big list of things you could fix on her, so forth and so forth. And this triangle goes up, and there's God right here. And as long as you're looking at the problem that you're married to, or whatever it is, your finances, or whatever it is, your earthly treasures, whatever's your burden, or health, or whatever, you're looking this way. And, but the quicker you look up to the Lord and the closer you get to the Lord, what happens to you in your relationships? You get closer. Can you all see this picture right here I'm talking about? And so you, you, you look up and everything begins to change. you got to change the way you're looking. And when you look up, your worries, your burdens, you trust Him with everything, salvation and your yoke. Why do you need to look up? Why is this so critical? Because if you don't start doing what this crazy cowboy preacher is talking about, look at this. This is why you're going to look on the inside. That little Tasmanian devil is always tearing stuff up, ain't he? Always looking for wrong, always mad. You may look right on the outside, but on the inside, God knows this is your butt nailed on the wall. If you don't get what this cowboy preacher is telling you to do and rest, ain't nothing going to change, and you're going to be a Tasmanian devil. I told you that this story around me where God said last, this Wednesday when I was, if you know me, by Wednesday I've already got everything lined out, and I start weeks ahead of every message. Wednesday, I ain't got a clue what I'm supposed to preach today. And he said, the message is around you, Todd. I'm feeding cows, hungry cows, and ain't been fed. Daddy's in the hospital, things going well. Daddy's in the hospital, things going well. Progressing. My brother that gave the kidneys out of the hospital. They get to send daddy home. I bring him home. And instantly his legs started swelling up. They took those boots off of him, the circulation. Something went wrong. My mother, I'm staying there at the house with both of them. So I had to get him back for test the next morning. And it's really hard to describe the weight of the situation. I can't describe the weight of the situation. Because I'm trying to get my mother dressed, and I'm trying to get my daddy to the hospital, it's five o'clock in the morning and I got to drive to Shreveport the burden's heavy y'all with me I'm talking about heavy I'm praying and all of a sudden the Lord reminds me of this word all of a sudden I get daddy to the hospital and they start testing. We start at 7.30 in the morning, go to this test, this test. By 10.30 I'm sitting with all these meetings. Finally the main doctor comes in and says Jimmy we got to put you right back in the hospital. He just got out of the hospital 12 hours earlier. Right back in the hospital. My mom was crying. Not 
what I wanted. But I trusted God. <laughs> I trusted God. I was yoked to Jesus. Not what I wanted. Not what I was praying for. But because I trusted God, guess what happened in that room? The weight was gone. They take 10,000 times care of my, better care than my daddy in a hospital than I could have at the house. Let me focus on my mama. I got my mama to some help the next day. My brother comes in from Corpus Christi, got me some help the next day. Praise Jesus. After eight days, I got to stay at the same house with my own wife. changed in my burdens but and that's where I've determined in my own life that rest from the Lord is a miracle you can't have it if you're not born again you'll never get you'll never get this rest if you don't trust him new guys I love y'all to death there's a lot of people some people come to saddle up here we're staying right in here I'm so excited I'm looking across here at people new people opening your homes doing small groups furthering the kingdom of God involved in the body of Christ like crazy and you got burdens in your life but I know you're experiencing right now in your life Satan's throwing things at you trying to stop you amen with me you want rest y'all need rest let's allow and pray for God to give you rest if you want it let's ask him to give it to us father we come to you you've talked about rest that happens when we trust you and I know there's people under the sound of my voice that have not been trusting you they're trying to take matters into their own hands and not trust you. They're yoked possibly to the wrong person and not to you. If you've made that mistake, now's a good time to say, God, please forgive me. I've been trying to carry all these burdens without you. I'm trying to fix all of these things and I've realized today that I haven't been doing the most important thing and I haven't trusted you and just say please forgive me today what I don't understand what I can't fix I trust you tell him that Jesus I trust you with all of this scripture says count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance but let endurance have its full effect that you be lacking nothing if anybody lack wisdom let him ask of God who gives liberally God give let me have wisdom to make sense out of what doesn't make sense I'm going to trust you do that miracle in me right now please give me the grace to trust just, just trust you You're here, and I don't care how many years you've been in church or how many times you've been baptized. If you were to die right now, there's something inside you that says something's wrong. I don't care if you're six or 60. If you were to die right now, you really don't know if Jesus knows you. You've prayed a prayer. But there's no evidence of the Holy Spirit in you giving you love and joy, peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control when there's 
there's no, really no reason to have it. You don't have the Holy Spirit in you, and you worried about that. Or you, you know good and well that if you were to die, you wouldn't go to hell. You don't have peace, and you're concerned, and you want to fix that today. I can tell you how to fix it. You, you can get yoked up to Jesus. Say this prayer right now. Say, Jesus, today I ask you, I'm just going to open the doors of my life wide open. And I'm praying that you come into my life and you take over the joint. Forgive me for thinking I can live my life without you. Forgive me in Jesus' name. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're here in... You're yoked up all by yourself. You're not yoked to Jesus. You're not yoked to the discipleship of Jesus. You're all by yourself. Jesus is plowing a very straight line. There is no stopping. They turn. He turns. You, you've drifted away. From Jesus. He's plowing straight. You've heard me say to keep your eyes on Jesus and your hands on the plow. I'm telling you today, you need to come back to Jesus and get yoked up with Jesus. He's plowing straight. Learn from Him in the Word of God. And you will receive the miracle of rest. And just say, Jesus, I've gotten away from your purpose, calling, my gifts. I'm not using them, I'm not plowing. In the name of Jesus, I come to you repenting. Yoke me back up to you that we plow a straight line together. Lord Jesus, I do pray for this miracle of rest, and I do believe with all my heart it's not anything we can do, but you give us rest. The times ahead of us are going to require us to be rested. Today is not about Circle J Cowboy Church. It's nothing about Circle J Cowboy Church. Today is all about every man, woman, boy, and girl on the face of this earth that if they don't know you, they're going to hell. And I pray you deploy us all over this region and all over this world to reach the lost and go make disciples of all nations. We're going to have to be rested. The end times are at hand. Things are fixing to change. You're coming back, and, and it's going to be too late for many. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you use us as a difference maker, a great team with great players, that we are one as you and the Father are one for your glory and for your might. Give us rest to come off the sidelines this year and make such an impact and a difference for you that lives would be changed and pulled out of the gates of hell for all eternity. In Jesus' name, I pray.